All right, uh, there we go. So yes, now it's a moment to introduce uh, Sophie Mezzaro. Sophie is a researcher at Dimec Smith VUV and a member of the Health and Working Living Labs team and a former member of the Data, Government and Communities team. Her research primarily focuses on trustworthy urban digital twins and data spaces in a smart city within the health context. So we are going to have a specific approach in the area of health. Prior to joining IMEC, Sophie briefly worked at the European Parliamentary Research Service and she was part of the initial team setting up the VOV AI Experience Center. So her presentation will be trustworthy urban digital twins. Now, yes, Sophie, the floor is yours. I will be talking about trustworthy urban digital twins. And uh, if you go to the next slide, you will see that this is indeed a collaboration between uh, IMAC and Smith. So IMAC is a research and development facility that uh, develops amongst other things, also the prototypes of urban digital twins, and thereby also helps cities shape the use cases that can vary from mobility to infrastructure. And here at Smith, we like to say that we work towards making technology uh, society proof. This uh, refers to digital inclusion, uh, digital rights, and security. And the next slide, please. Uh, so where did our project actually come in? Uh, as you can imagine, when IMAC works together with the city on an urban digital twin, we have a highly, um, an extremely technologically advanced team and civil servants who are possibly not as advanced as the developers. So they may have a different uh, definition of what is useful, what is easy to use, and what is an added value of an urban digital twin. And these are actually uh, aspects of initial trust formation. And initial trust formation refers to the period of time when an end user forms their expectations and associates risks and uncertainties with an innovation. And this is important because this actually defines uh, the successful uptake of any innovation. So for this reason, uh, we conducted interviews with both groups to see how they see what is a trustworthy urban digital twin. Uh, the, the, bo the both groups actually agreed that it's very important that the data is accurate, ver verifiable, accessible and clear, and that all stakeholders should be involved in the entire development process of the digital twin. However, it was only the civil servants who added that for them, it's very important to know how the data was actually con uh, collected, the timeliness of the data. They also mentioned uh, several, um, several. Um, um, I, I'm afraid uh, I just got a comment that uh, you cannot see my slides just for the technical team, but uh, it's okay, I can explain what's on the slides. Uh, so the civil servants in the meantime also added that uh, there are certain aspects of an interface that's necessary for them, for example, that uh, it's flexible and customizable for them, that it's, repu it's reputable, so either it goes through a certification process or it's developed by a reputable team. They also need to know why, what is the added value of using an urban digital twin for their decision making process over not using it. What's the limit, what are the limitations of such a technology and uh, what's the potential error of this simulation, uh, of a simulation that the digital twin produces. So now keeping uh, in mind these criteria, uh, here I present you a screenshot of uh, um, uh, an urban digital twin developed by IMAC. Uh, and this is actually the city of Antwerp. So as I said, this is a screenshot. So it's only a moment of the simulation, but this is uh, what happens in Antwerp at 7 a.m. in case of a storm. As you, I hope you see, um, there are, um, there's a conjunction in the city. And I think uh, we can agree that this interface uh, appears as easy to, as something that's easy to use for a non-technical end user. There's also a bot that's there to help you navigate across the platform. However, there actually, um, if we think about what we just discussed, there's actually no information uh, about the data and uh, 
and the reliability of the simulation. Um, and if you go to the next slide, then for this uh, reason, uh, actually we, we decided to develop data checklists to address this tension. Uh, the purpose here is to um, communicate technical information about data sets to non-technical end users. So, opa, um, I'm afraid that the screen is, uh, all right, well, I can just continue that. So basically we, we developed yes, two- uh, Exactly, now, now I think we, we, got, we got the screen back, yes. All right. Um, well, if, if anyone wants to see the screenshot afterwards, please feel free to reach out and I can, I can share with you everything if you have any questions. But uh, basically, uh, now I would just like to discuss what is it actually that we did. And that was that we, we, we developed this data checklist. So I said it's to, to communicate technical information about the data set uh, to non-technical end users, so the civil servants. We have two. Uh, data checklists. So the first one serves to um, assess uh, the uh, data sets before standardizing it for the purpose of a digital twin, which means having it in the same language and format. Uh, this assessment then will document what can actually be expected from this data set, and this will help manage expectations from both parties. The second uh, data checklist looks at uh, the data set once it's been refined. So it's already in the same uh, language and format like all the data sets that will actually drive the digital twin. And this assessment will actually uh, uh, create results that can be visualized in the interface. Uh, if you go to the next slide, then you will, uh, it will show how it, we actually uh, realize this. So for now, the questions are stored in, in an Excel sheet. The questions are actually, uh, you can break them down into categories. The categories were defined together with the end users and each, uh, each question uh, is also assigned a weight. So once the, the, a member of the development team fills out this form, uh, the answers will actually add up to a score. And this will actually, uh, this score you can actually use to then visualize the information. So if you go to the next slide, it will show how that actually happens. So this is now in the BI environment. This is again a simulation. We, these are just two uh, random data sets we used, uh, AWV induction loops and loop data. And you can see on the left side uh, how they scored in different categories. Also on the right side, there are different, different ways to visualize it. So this environment also, again, gives you a possibility to visualize information any way you want to. And then if you like, you can, for example, add a data catalog to your um, interface of the digital twin and, uh, and, and just share that information with non-technical end users because it's a lot easier to understand numbers that were defined by technical people than them having to, to assess the data set on their own. So um, I would like to now thank you for your attention. I hope, uh, although it was with, without the slide more or less, but I hope you could follow it. But if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to reach out. We will, we will have the time to, thank you very much and thank you for your patience. I. We'll have the time to have uh, questions by the end, but I would like to, to bring just one, one element that you brought in is in the, let's say the, the common work that public servants are having to the developers. You were talking about the trust formation, which definitely sounds to me as a, as a, as a war game for transformation, right? So uh, um, could you be, which could be from your point of view, the, the basics or the, uh, the, the, the lessons learned that you, that you got from this working task in, in order to create and building up the trust together with the, with the public servants, keeping this trust working, or, because I understand that it can be crucial, right? In order to, 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 to obtain a final working solution that is finally uh, providing good results, right? Uh, I think that's a, that's a very valuable question. Um, when we talk about trust, there are actually um, different uh, 
different aspects of an innovation where you have to uh, look at. So it's not merely about the technology itself, but it's also the deployment and the use of uh, technology that uh, that you have to um, look at. So it's, it's an entire environment that you have to assess uh, in the context of trust. Um, practically speaking, it means that uh, it is still a collaboration. So you do have to ensure transparency and as transparency works too much or too little can be a problem so if, the, if you have to also understand how to be transparent with your end user what is the information that's necessary for them to know and what is it that will just overwhelm them thank you very much i think this this comment is very useful because since we are creating in the different regions this community of mutual learning particularly in the context of digital twin, we have to have this leverage between what is too much to explain and what is too, too little in order to allow for, for actual effective sharing. Thank you very much. We will definitely come back to that later. Uh, don't go too far away because now we are